Your brain literally changes shape during your period. Crazy, right? And almost nobody talks about it. How long is it? So it's 28 days. The egg is developing, it's growing. And the lining of the uterus sheds and a girl or a woman has a period. Sure, all of that's true, but here's what blew my mind. While your body is doing all of this, your brain is rewiring itself every single month. So of course this got me asking, how exactly does the brain change? Is this why we feel tired, moody and hungry around our periods? And most importantly, can we actually do something about it? Well, I study psychology and neuroscience and once I dug into the research, what I found completely changed the way I see my cycle. So in this video, we will cover everything that happens to your brain and body during your cycle and how to work with your hormones to ease cramps, boost energy and feel amazing. Let's get into it. So the menstrual cycle generally consists of four stages, follicular, ovulation, luteal, and menstruation. And during each phase, different hormones rule the body, which is why you're feeling so different. For each of these phases, we'll cover what happens in the body, what happens in the brain as a result, and what you can do to support these processes. All right, let's start with follicular, the fresh start of your cycle. Think of it as springtime in your body. So when the cycle starts, what happens? Your brain, the big boss, says, we need to prepare an egg. So the pituitary gland, this tiny gland right here at the base of the brain, sends two hormones to the ovaries, FSH and LH. Imagine them as little messengers that travel through the bloodstream, reach the ovary and deliver the message, you need to start preparing some eggs now. The ovary has a huge vault of eggs typically hundreds of thousands. When it receives this message, it starts maturing around 1,000 eggs at once. But why do they call this phase the follicular phase? Well, these immature eggs reside in little spherical packages that are called follicles, hence the follicular phase. While the eggs grow, the follicles start producing estrogen. As estrogen increases, some of it travels back to the brain, which signals to the pituitary to stop releasing FSH and LH. Basically, the ovary says, thanks, I got the message, I've started making eggs now. At the same time the eggs are maturing, the uterus starts thickening its lining, the endometrium, to prepare for a potential pregnancy. Imagine it like building a cozy home for a potential baby. And so the cycle has officially begun. But how does the brain feel with the current cocktail of hormones? Well, as we saw, the dominant hormone in the follicular phase is estrogen. But why is that important? Well, estrogen can travel to almost any cell in the body and change how it works. For example, during puberty, it acts on breast tissue by making it grow and develop but studies show that it can also affect cognitive functioning. For example, it positively affects this brain area called the hippocampus, which is involved in learning and memory formation. So take advantage of this in the follicular phase. Your brain is basically better wired for learning. But what about mood? Why do we feel this surge of optimism during the follicular phase? Well, estrogen also tweaks your brain chemistry, increasing serotonin and dopamine production. This means you'll be more motivated, have more energy, and have a better mood overall. But this is my favorite part. It influences the limbic system, which is your brain's emotional center. And this helps you regulate your emotions better. That's why you may feel calmer under stress or better able to handle conflict. This makes the follicular phase the perfect time to have tough conversations. Okay, it seems like a lot is going on in the brain and the body, but how can we support our body in all of these processes, not just in the follicular phase, but in any phase? Well, some of the most effective things are simple, moving your body, sleeping enough, eating real food. But here's the thing, even if you do all of these things, stress can still get in the way. When it lingers, cortisol rises, and that can block estrogen and other reproductive hormones. So they can't really do their job. So adding meditation, yoga, or a walk in nature can really make a difference. However, there's another piece we don't really see coming. Chemicals in our everyday products. Perfume, makeup, cleaning sprays, they can all mess with the hormone system. They don't always cause problems right away, but over time they can throw things off balance. So what can you do? For me, one simple step has been checking the products with an app. It's not about being perfect, just swapping where you can. And honestly, I was shocked to find that even menstrual pads and tampons contain perfumes, bleaches, and heavy metals, so I switched to chemical-free brands. So you've entered ovulation, the summertime of your cycle. Your skin is glowing, you feel amazing, confident, social. It's incredible, I wish I could stay there all the time. So what happens in your body during ovulation? Well, in the follicular phase, we saw how the ovary started preparing about 1000 immature follicles. But only one of these follicles gets selected to mature fully. This is the chosen one. The rest undergo a natural cell death process because, well, we cannot really carry a thousand babies. When the chosen egg is fully mature, estrogen peaks, which tells the brain that it's ready to be released. The brain then sends LH and some FSH again to release the egg. The egg is released, it travels to the fallopian tube waiting to be fertilized. And this is ovulation. 
Your brain is on fire during ovulation. It's basically running in high gear. Memory, focus and verbal skills all get a boost. Your dopamine spikes, giving you more energy, motivation and a better mood. Even your senses sharpen, like vision, hearing or smell, which is why a whiff of chocolate or perfume might hit differently. Personally, I noticed this for myself. And here's a fun twist. Pain sensitivity is at its lowest during this time. That means your brain handles discomfort better, making this a perfect time to schedule activities that might hurt a bit, like getting a shot or even pushing yourself at the gym. But to me, the best part is the confidence boost. Studies show that during ovulation, women are more social, perceive themselves as more attractive, and even pick clothes or products that might enhance their appearance. It's all unconscious, driven by evolution and geared towards finding a partner, of course. Sounds great, right? Well, here's where it gets a little wild. Some studies show that ovulating women tend to pursue physically attractive men who do not want to be in a long-term relationship over kind or reliable men. The brain's focus on reproduction can cloud judgment a bit. Basically, your brain is at its cognitive best, except when it comes to picking a partner. It's kind of ironic. So what are some things you can do to support ovulation? Well, estrogen can suppress appetite, which is probably why you're not feeling very hungry, but your body is doing so much work behind the scenes, so it needs proper nutrition. Here's what most people miss. Your body can only metabolize estrogen if it has the right helpers, and this is where veggies come in. Studies show that cruciferous vegetables like broccoli or cauliflower are particularly important for this task. They help turn estrogen into the good kind that can protect your cells instead of the bad kind that can trigger PMS. They're also packed with fiber, which helps move excess estrogen out through the gut. If digestion slows down, estrogen can get recycled back into the bloodstream, and too much over time can cause problems. So pile on the veggies to keep those hormones balanced. After ovulation, when the egg is released, something special happens. That follicle that housed the egg, it doesn't just vanish. It transforms into a whole new structure called the corpus luteum. Hence why we call this phase the luteal phase. The corpus luteum starts producing the other key hormone of your cycle, progesterone. Progesterone basically supercharges your utero lining. It makes it thick and nutrient rich and ready to welcome an embryo if fertilization happens. It basically says, hey, a baby may be on the way, so let's get everything prepared. So now estrogen's reign has ended and progesterone is the new boss. So how does the brain feel about that? In the brain, progesterone is transformed into a neurosteroid known for its calming and anti-anxiety effects. It enhances GABA, which reduces brain activity, and as a result, you're feeling pretty calm and mellow. This calming effect may also promote sleep and improve sleep quality and duration, although this may vary from person to person. But here's the fun part. Progesterone can also boost your metabolism, which is why you may be feeling more hungry than usual, but at the same time, your body is also burning off more calories. At this point in the cycle, balance is key. Estrogen and progesterone need to work together. If estrogen spikes without enough progesterone, this can lead to heavier periods, stronger cramps, or even conditions like endometriosis. So the same tips from before still apply. Pile on veggies, anti-inflammatory foods, anything rich in vitamins and minerals, move your body to support hormonal function, and since your period is right around the corner, focusing on iron-rich foods can also be a smart move. What happens if the egg is not fertilized? Well, then it breaks down in the fallopian tube and gets reabsorbed by the body. Meanwhile, the corpus luteum, that leftover follicle pumping out progesterone, also degenerates. Hormone levels drop quickly and this triggers the shedding of the uterine lining and later on its release from the body, what you experience as a period. So the body can start the process again the next month. Now here's a wild fact. During your period, your brain's grey matter actually shrinks. Okay, hold on. This needs a little more nuance. Grey matter changes aren't happening everywhere, just in spots like the hippocampus and basal ganglia, following the rise and fall of hormones. What's interesting is that one study tracked the brains of men and women over a four-week period. For men, brain volume pretty much stayed the same, no big changes. For women though, brains actually changed volume slightly, peaking around ovulation by about 13.5 milliliters. That's roughly the size of a small walnut. These tiny shifts can subtly affect memory, mood, focus, and how reactive your nervous system feels. And for the men watching this, no, we cannot control it. I've always wondered why does our period make us want to curl up on the couch, eat ice cream all day and feel all the feels? Well, before your period, estrogen kept you a beat and progesterone chilled you out, right? Now, both are gone, out the door. So no estrogen translates to lower serotonin and dopamine, that's where the low mood, irritability, brain fog and drop in motivation come from. And if progesterone falls too quickly, the brain struggles to adapt, leading to anxiety and restlessness. So what actually helps? What are some natural ways to boost serotonin and dopamine? Get outside, sunlight is your friend. 
You can also try moving your body, enjoying your favorite hobby, or just do anything that makes you feel good. Some foods that will help with serotonin and dopamine production in the brain are the following. And speaking of food, where do these cravings come from? Well, on the one hand, now that your dopamine is pretty low, you're chasing fast rewards, and sugary foods can give you that fast spike in dopamine, making you feel a little better. At the same time, the low estrogen can mess up your blood sugar, making you naturally reaching for carbs. But here's the catch. The sugar spike feels good for a second, and then it backfires. More cramps, more headaches, more brain fog. So what can you do if you still want that chocolate cake? Well, go for it, but after a balanced meal complete with protein, veggies, and healthy fats. That way your body can handle it better and you avoid making symptoms worse. So there you have it, that's the menstrual cycle with all the ups and downs. It's actually wild how much work women's bodies do every single month. Now you know why you feel so different each week and how to work with your hormones instead of against them and appreciate each phase for what it is. Tackle the tough stuff during follicular and ovulation and give yourself the rest you deserve during luteal and menstruation. And if you want a little brain boost along the way, check out this video to see what much you can do for your brain power. I'll see you there.